Hello everybody and welcome back to some more Scrap Mechanic. So today we're going to be doing a short video where I show you guys a completed build that I did in my live stream. Today we're going to be looking at this dynamic elevator. It's a number logic based elevator that's not attached to the elevator shaft or the building that it's in at all. It uses these rolling wheels to just go up and down an arbitrary amount that you tell it to. So that's what we're going to be checking out today. We're going to be checking out this dynamic elevator, how to build this sort of thing with your own elevator shaft, how the logic works and some of the improvements that you could do with a elevator like this. This is just a first version, so already I learned a few things that could be improved in a future design. So this is the completed dynamic elevator build. Uh, obviously inside you saw that there was the two displays. So this is the display that works from the keypad where you're requesting to go, and this is your current floor. And then when the two match, the light lights up and the door opens and it goes bing bong. Of course we have a radio in here for elevator music. Pretty, pretty good elevator music, I gotta say. There is a secret seat on top of the ceiling, and this is the master seat, so that if you ever want to get out of the elevator, you can. There's also a switch connected that turns the system on. As you can see, the wheels are already starting to bring us to floor 15, I think the elevator said. And on the side over there, you can see those pink wedges. Uh, they extend outwards. That's the emergency brake system. So let's go ahead and show you. This elevator, by the way, is a 16 by 16 box. It's obviously taller than 16 blocks, but um, the elevator shaft on the outside is actually 18 by 18, just so that the inside of the shaft can be 16 by 16. Get it? Also, every floor, every floor is exactly 16 blocks tall. The floors are precisely 16 blocks apart, although they don't have to be. Uh, this dynamic elevator, this is just a first version, so I hard-coded the number 16 into this elevator. So when you put this in an elevator shaft, this elevator expects the floors to be 16 blocks apart. But it is possible to use a dynamic value for that as well, so that the player can spawn in their elevator and say, Oh, my floors are 20 blocks apart, they're not 16. And the elevator would just understand that. And on the inside, there's something very important about this elevator shaft on the inside. On the left side, relative to all the doors, uh, you can see the ones that I painted, but you can't see all the other ones that go up. They go up all the way. Every floor has little blocks like this. Tick, tick. On the left side only, not the right side. And I painted them that pink color so that you can see, just like these pink wedges over here, this is the emergency brake system. So this is actually a very interesting part of elevators. I think so, anyway. It's actually pretty cool because this dynamic elevator will go both up and down, right? But it's also going to have a speedometer over here. Right here, there's going to be a speedometer, and it's going to compare the speed that it's going downwards with its operational speed, the speed that the elevator knows it can safely go down. If it goes beyond that speed, then it's going to trigger the pistons and do the emergency stop. And I used wedges here for this emergency brake, uh, so that the blocks on the inside would kind of slide up the wedges, and kind of give like a deceleration instead of an updraft stop. You don't want to kill the passengers inside by, you know, just putting blocks out here that lock the elevator in place. You want a slow stop, even in an emergency situation, you want them to be safe. So pay attention to the wheels and those wedges on the side. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off the elevator, so that's going to retract the wheels, and the elevator's just going to fall down all of a sudden, which is going to trigger that speed sensor. Check it out. Three, two, one, off. Immediately, the wedges push out, and the elevator stopped. It stopped so quickly, actually, I don't think we fell even half a floor. Let's try again. We're going to go all the way up to floor 18, where we're actually supposed to go. All right, we're at floor 18. Now let's turn off the elevator and see what happens, how far we actually go down from the floor that we're at. Three, two, one, now. Yeah, look at that, look at that, look at that. I can't even crawl out of here. <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh, I'm stuck. So this is the reaction speed of the emergency brake system. Uh, you, you don't even fall down half a floor. I think that's super safe. Let's go ahead and show you real quick how to set up one of these dynamic elevators yourself in your own world. On the workshop, I'm going to be putting up this example elevator shaft 01 right here. I think it's uh, 30 floors of 16 blocks, 16 by 16 by 16, 30 floors, and you can see the first floor is painted black. So let's go ahead and show you how to get this set up in your own world. So the first thing that you want to do is actually set up the basement floor, floor number zero. And you can do that just by slopping down some blocks. It doesn't really matter. It does not matter how tall this is. It just needs to be a little bit tall enough for your elevator wheels to actually fit under there. 
when you're on floor one. So the first step is to actually put something down to actually weld your elevator shaft onto. You don't want your elevator shaft to be welded directly onto the ground uh, because your elevator is not going to be able to go down to the bottom floor. So let's go ahead and show you. We're just going to slap down, oh, any old number of blocks. I don't know how many blocks that was, uh, but it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter, and we'll show you why. Take my weld tool right here. We're going to go up. Bam! We got another example elevator shaft welded in place. Any old arbitrary number of blocks offsets from the ground. All right, so if you notice those uh, emergency break blocks on the first floor, you can actually remove them because you don't need them. If anything, they're actually in your way when you try to spawn in your elevator, so you definitely need to remove them from the first floor. But one thing that you got to keep in mind is that they're inside the blueprint, uh, because this is the blueprint that you spawn in multiple times and copy-paste on top of each other. So that's why those emergency break blocks are in there, to make sure that you actually have emergency break blocks on floor 31 and 61 and 91. Every time that you copy-paste, you need them to be there. Alright, so we have our elevator shaft welded in place. Uh, let's go ahead and put the bottom walls in place, just to, just to make our lives a little bit easier. And now that we have our elevator shaft welded in place, let's spawn in a dynamic elevator. Bing! Alright, we're gonna put you in place. Now that we have the emergency blocks out of the way, we have the ability to put it in here. First things first, you're gonna hop into the elevator. Uh, you're gonna make sure... I'm just gonna hit clear, I don't know why, but I'm gonna hit 1 and enter to make sure that the elevator sets to one. We're gonna go to floor number one right now. And just like that, you might think that the elevator's working, but uh, we're not done yet, we're not done yet. As you can see, the elevator is a little bit offset. Uh, the elevator went too tall for floor number one, and that's just because I put an arbitrary number of blocks down here for the basement. I don't actually know how tall this was, so the elevator doesn't know where exactly floor number one is. That's actually something that you can very easily adjust. I put in a feature specifically for this reason, was these things right here pointed to by the hand. Uh, with these blocks right here, you can adjust the vertical offset of the elevator floors. So let's just go ahead and press this a bunch of times. And you can see we're going down slowly. Just ignore the noises. We're just gonna hit this a number of times until we see in the front here. Yes, look at that. Look at that. Dude, look at the alignment of that. I can't tell which block I attach to the elevator and which one I attach to the elevator shaft. You see that tiny difference right there? Tiny, tiny dit like that. This is how you align your elevator. My goodness, that's great. Anyway, now that your elevator's all lined up and everything, uh, now you can go ahead and press any floor number, hit enter, and there you go. You're ready to go up the floors. And that's really all that it takes to set up a dynamic elevator in your own world. As long as the elevator shaft is 16 blocks for each floor. But technically speaking, you can improve on this design and change that number to anything else as well. Nice. Nice. And of course, whether you're going up or down, it works the same way. So here we are at floor 75, just a little bit higher than we were before. Uh, and I tried to keep the elevator speed at walking speed, so all the passengers inside should still be able to walk around on their feet without uh, without that falling animation taking over. Although it is really, really close to like the, the theoretical maximum for dwarf falling speed. Uh, if, see, you can see I'm bouncing around, but I'm still able to walk around. Uh, but then as soon as I hit crouch, bam! I can't uncrouch. I am stuck crouched forever. This is how you can permanently crouch people. See, I'm, I'm not crouching. Nothing I can do to uncrouch. <laughs> Nothing I can do. So that I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, I found like a, a, a really... I found like a really niche speed. Uh, like this speed going downwards. As long as you're constantly going down at that speed, you can't uncrouch. It's such a weird, such a weird mechanic of the game. Anyway, anyway. This dynamic elevator, I'm, uh, I'm pretty proud of it actually, I'm pretty proud, I'm happy with uh, how it turned out. So one thing to keep in mind is that this elevator doesn't have any like programming or checks. Like if you tell it you want to go to floor zero, it will try to go to floor zero where you tell where you told it floor zero was. So, if, and if there's no floor zero there, the elevator's just going to try smashing through whatever's in the way. Uh, so it's not that smart of an elevator, it's not a self-aware elevator, you definitely have to set it up for the elevator shaft that you're creating. We're gonna go to floor 119. 
Uh, because I think there's 120 floors, exactly. So we're gonna go to 119, and uh, we'll see you when we're up there. We'll see you when we're up there. Let me tell you, I made a tall elevator shaft. Holy. Ah, uh, look at that, look at that. Okay, so we are on the 19th, <laughs> 119th floor. There we go. 119th floor. The last floor is the top floor, 120. 120 floors tall times 16 blocks. So you can already get the uh, block count. How, how, how many blocks we are off the ground here right now. And look at the view, man. Look at the view. <laughs> look at the vomit colored ground all over the place. Look at this disgusting, I mean, beautiful view. You gotta keep in mind that if your elevator doesn't have a ceiling, it doesn't have a maximum floor count, it will just keep on trying to go up there anyway. So let's go ahead and show you uh, what it looks like when we're gonna go to floor 250. Check it out. This is what the elevator just does. Yep. We're still not at floor 250, but this is uh, this is what I told it to do. It's trying to go up. It's still trying to go up there. So that's something to keep in mind is that a dynamic elevator doesn't necessarily mean a smart elevator. It just means, um, oh gosh, I'm definitely gonna fall down. Uh oh. No! Ugh, ugh, land on a floor, land on a floor, land on a floor, land on a floor, 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 floor. Whoa. What floor am I on? <laughs> There's no point. There's no point. I should have kept going. I should have kept going if I go underground. Yeah, like that. Now I can spawn back on top. Back on top, back on top. Yes! I got it! Ha 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 ha! Beat you, Scrap Mechanic Physics. I beat you. I beat you this time. All right, so now let's go down. Let's bring the elevator down. Let's talk a little bit more about this dynamic elevator logic in case you guys actually want to build one of your own. So I think you already saw a little bit about the emergency brake system and how that works. It's not really that complicated. Just if your downward speed is too fast, stop the elevator. Plus there's like other ways that you might want to do it as well. You don't have to use wedges. You don't have to use the blocks on the inside. You don't have to use friction. You can just use wheels. And of course, you saw that there was this counter block over here that adjusts the offset of the floors. So as you can see, we have uh, an altitude meter. So this is the like precise point that we consider the elevator to exist on. Even though it exists like way up there and down here, this is just the mathematical point that we consider the elevator to be at. Now, of course, you guys already know what this thing does. This just adds an offset onto the current altitude meter. So you saw when I was putting it into the elevator shaft, I needed to adjust it down a little bit. I just clicked the button a few times to add an offset to the actual altitude meter to line it up to the floors of my elevator shaft. Anyway, from there, it's not too complicated. We're just dividing the number by 16 since each floor is 16 blocks tall. And then you can see the display over here. The elevator thinks we're on floor number one. So if we go down, it's floor number zero. If you go up 16 blocks, floor number one, go up another 16 and that's floor number two that it thinks that we're on all of a sudden. And over here is a memory panel. This is what the keypad writes into. The keypad from the inside, the person puts in their floor number that they want to go to, and then the memory panel is used to compare our current floor with our target floor. And then from there, we just get an up-down direction, and then do a little bit of math to actually power the wheels to go up or down until we get to the floor. So it's not really that complicated of stuff, but I encourage you guys to watch the live stream, the very frustrating process of the building in the live stream, if you want <laughs> if you want to see how that stuff worked, because uh, that drive system I built in the live stream. I also got to give a shout out to Blue Flame for helping me out with a little bit of the logic in that section. You know, with number logic and programming in general, there's multiple ways of doing the exact same thing. You can design a, an entirely different way of doing the exact same function. And that's actually one of the things that I was stuck on during the live stream was uh, I was so focused on trying to get the uh, tick delay being equal for the up direction and the down direction. And you know, really thinking about it, thinking about it, I'm such a dingus, I'm such a dingus because it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. People inside the elevator aren't gonna notice a one tick delay if you're going up versus down, right? Oh no, the up direction's a little bit slower than the down direction, like no, nobody's gonna notice a one tick delay. So I'm a dingus, thank you to Blue Flame for offering me a very good solution that doesn't, like you don't care about tick delay. I think, uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at this, I I'm pretty sure it's exactly what I said, that the up direction is a little bit slower than the down direction by one tick, just because you have to connect to the min-max this way. I was so concerned about getting equal tick delay for the up and down directions to be exactly the same, but uh, that's just a force of habit. When you're working with logic, when you're working with uh, number logic, and like you're making the digital arcade system stuff, you definitely want all the ticks to be synchronized and you, you don't want them to like get out of whack or anything like that. So it's just a force of habit and I gotta give a thanks to Blue Flame for offering a solution that uh, where the ticks don't matter definitely is the solution for this dynamic elevator. So just like the elevator shaft 01, I'm gonna be putting up this dynamic elevator onto the workshop for you guys to play around with yourself. It has all the features listed, how to use it, how to put it into the, uh, how to put it into the elevator shaft. I'm gonna put the link to the elevator shaft there as well. I don't think anybody actually needs this elevator. And I don't think anybody actually needs this elevator shaft either. Like if you think about it, if you think about it, Scrap Mechanic isn't capable of supporting a building, like an apartment building, even with 10 floors full of stuff. I don't think Scrap Mechanic's capable of supporting even 10 floors. So, you know, any elevator that you build, it doesn't have to be a dynamic elevator. It can just be on pistons or whatever. Nobody's ever gonna have an elevator shaft this tall but you can if you want to. Now you can if you want to. <laughs> all right, well, that's all that I have to show you guys for today. Let me know down in the comments below, what would you have done differently about this elevator? Or is this just the elevator of your dreams? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.